So good night, everyone. It's 9 p.m. Cairo time exactly. And now we are in the phase between the endometrial cancer module and cervical cancer module. For cervical cancer, for the cancer, and to speak about basics of any is associate professor of the University, is one of our pioneers. He uh, post graduate education and really we uh, speak with him about dance based medicine. Okay. السلام عليكم شغال السلام عليكم انا and this will be يبقى احنا قلنا قلنا ان احنا عندنا دي دي بتوريني بس الكانسر او دول العالم اللي فيها الكانسر ريسك اعلى زي ما احنا شايفين I don't know exactly why you that, and Egypt is is. Then, and then a cancer prevention. Then a secondary cancer prevention, and then a tertiary cancer prevention. How? يعني الايمنج ان احنا البيشن from the Western diet better, we we change the weight, we exercise. primary prevention بينما secondary prevention invasion this ودي اللي هي In this phase, second prevention. Three the screening goes in. Low of the ACE inflation, like no fee initiation. Okay, okay. So we're asking about sanction, which is the aim second without symptom and asymptomatic. Uh, to reduce the uh, to decrease the yes, and, and the and the rest for diagnosis will will never turn to an invasion or will never fertility to the patient over uh, th there is some synchronous screening so we have, have mixed screening organ organizing and domestic screen or organic 
Cancer, 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 cancer screening programs and organized these. Other side. Okay. Uh, okay. So we are talking. We are talking about screen. Okay. And to uh, organize. احنا Now we are trying to solve, we are trying to solve the problem yet. طيب الصوت كده واضح اشرح لهم الصوت كده واضح يا محمد في مشكله هنا لا مش مشكله في النت مشكله في الساوند سيستم انا مالك يا رحمن راح يا راح Okay, so so we, we are now speaking up that we have the as far as the incidence of cancer and the prevalence being increasing. Like smoking alcohol, the prevention, which is mainly the screening, which will go through, and tertiary prevention for suspension or where screening and benefit cancer at an earlier stage or detect a pre cancer region aiming to Knows can never go phase, will never yeah, cause yeah, mortality. Yeah, we'll 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 uh, now, we are, now we are going to another, another, another topic, which is types of, of screening. We have the organ screening, we have the hands of the screening, some may be more than the national life. This way, the patient is coming to the screen, but because he's in the screening, screening is. And go for example, if you are just in panic and you have patients who are treated from the disease, you can be able to advise or detect and watch it in the same way. I'm the only one of the years was clearly to have a breast, but you wash for it because it's in the screen. 
This is called the opportunistic system. Um, thereafter, there is there is there is a, uh, and a very important school. Many many. Uh, um, apart from being a slogan, but it is not always the case. You are not screening program. You are patient with the cancer. For example, if if you are in in Canada, you. For cancer with BSA, actually, you are detecting patient who has already developed breast cancer. Okay. So um, the WHO have put some criteria. Disease. disease should be have should have serious consequences affecting the health of the patient. And this means safety more than 70 or 80 percent approximately and go through the system. Should have disease you screen for so uh, this was, would mean that you didn't benefit the patient. You just so you see a reliable test of high specificity available for this disease if you detect that. Uh, and the fourth thing is for medication. Uh, the screen. This is the same thing we have we have talked about the slogan. It's not always automatic. Prevented yeah. uh, uh, I I know this this is one of one of the nightmares since this very uh, we can it means mainly mainly when you say the patient wrote the disease and you can roll in the patient if you have a high specificity. It means a high robust. It means when the test is negative, it's so it's high to negative. And this is the zone between them. And when you go with this instead, okay, but but anyway, you you, you need to high accuracy, high specificity. Okay. Value of screening, as as we said, so you need early detection. Uh, and then, um, impact of cancer screening. You can see th these are our three. Cancer, which have an incidence in patients. It's colorectal cancer, which is an incidence about four percent. And you can get about one thirty-one percent in USA between nine and twenty eighteen. For more and more health programs cheered in decreasing the mortality or improving improving the health care. Um, again, for for most screening programs, you usually need to uh, or or uh, and the body test to bring the color bullets and for the and for the high population. Uh, question before starting a national screening program. You need to know first the prevalence 
The second thing uh, is is to choose a reliable uh, and really I have to choose a good screening test, and then I need to choose whom to screen. So you need to have a cost benefit and some Cancer screening, uh, what you need to know is there is many. As, as you. At the radiation therapy. So these patients need to be. Okay, uh, finally, to
Very. In Hi, hi, Grace. The voice is the the voice is unclear completely. Try just to do the same. Uh, the, the, I can uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. you can hear me now. Well, if you which was the first advance in fifty years, the main advance. That it is shorter time, and that in in a in a, you can do HPV testing and other molecular, but this is more or equivalent in this taking CIN two plus. Okay, so it's equivalent to BAP and CIN two and plus, but if you uh, undetermined significant pathology, you can do it. For the liquid based pathology, the third type of tool for screening for the cancer is the HPV testing. And you can see that the sensitivity is 90%. And the tool, which is a tool which we're gonna use here in Egypt, is the wire. Section, uh, Okay, you can hear me now? You can hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, so, so just, just back up. We have four screening tools. It's either the conventional pap smear, or the liquid-based cytology, which is most superior in some in some uh, uh, under my significant cytology, the HBV testing, which is, is gonna be the, the 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 primary screening test now in in many areas in USA, uh, and the uh, via test, which we will use in the screening program in Egypt mostly. Ah, okay, okay. So um, again, uh, for screening in limited resource, as in our case, the H the the WHO recommended two things. First. Uh, whatever the screening problem, they, 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 they don't mind whatever one of the four screening problems you can use, but you should cover more than 70% of the population uh, at least one time to say that you have a good screening problem, whatever the tool and whatever the frequency of screening, but at least you need to cover 70% of the population. The second thing for a good screening tool for limited resources is that you need to have uh, action for every positive woman detected in screening. 
So you don't, don't just have a screening and then they are missed with a positive finding. Okay, so um, this is this is this is the cervical screening. So th there is difficult. Uh, th there is different recommendation for cervical cancer screening from different societies. If we go for the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and this is the only society now that start screening at age of twenty one, because if you see the American Cancer Society, they change it from twenty one to to twenty five. For the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. It's starting at 21, and in the first 10, 10, uh, 10 years, from 21 to 29, uh, it's a BAP test every three years. And then in the next 35 years, it is a, a co-test PAP with HPV testing, and every five years, and at 65 years old, you can stop the screening. If we go for the NHS screening program, the UK-based screening, so they start at 25, uh, uh, and at this at this case, so they they do HPV testing, they they do uh, HPV testing. If, if negative, screen again in three to five years. Uh, if positive, uh, with no cytology uh, uh, atypia, they screen again with the same test in one year and again in one year. If you have two HPV two years with HPV positive, you do colposcopy. So you can see that they are very late to do colposcopy. If if you have two HPV consequent in consequent years with with positive finding without abnormal cytology, if you have HPV positive with abnormal cytology, they just do uh, colposcopy. It's a simple screening program. Uh, for the current uh, um, American Cancer Society recommendation, they start again at twenty five as the UK school. Uh, they recommend primary HPV testing every five years. And if it is not available for co-testing with HPV and PEP, uh, if this again is not available for PEP testing every three years. Uh, and they do recommend that patient who have done a total hysterectomy without any risk of cervical cancer before, they, they can opt out of the screening program. But those who have done subtotal hysterectomy, leaving the cervix, they still follow the same screening rules from 25 up. They don't change uh, the screening tools for HPV vaccinated patients. So there, there is no evidence to change the tool. Uh, if you have a pre, uh, serious precancerous lesion you st and, and you have 65 years old, you still follow the screening 25 to 20, 20 to 25 years after you have had the diagnosis, even if you pass at 65 years old. Okay, so you, you normally opt out from screening at 65. But if you have a finding serious cervical CINS3 positive or, or cervical cancer, or whatever. Uh, so you need to con continue screening for 20 years after the diagnosis, even if you bust 65 years old. Okay. For, for the cytology findings, we have one of uh, five findings. Uh, either we have uh, atypical squamous cells with undetermined significance, uh, and this is the most common abnormality in PAP test, or we have low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion or high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or atypical cells that cannot exclude high-grade, or atypical glandular cells, okay? okay. <laughs> uh, again, how to manage uh, with patient after after cytology or after HPV testing? We want to know what is, and then after two weeks, we are going to have uh, in the cancer screening in details. In details, so just, just going gradually for that. And you have a colposcopy uh, day of or We have a colposcopy tomorrow. workshop tomorrow, and we have the basic screening of uh, the cervical cancer module two weeks after from tomorrow. Okay. okay. So just just going rapidly for that. So uh, how to how to manage with with the finding in cytology in the HBV? Uh, you can see that there there is a guidance done by American Society of Colposcopy and Cervical Pathology in 2019, and this is the last one from them. Is that they, they it's it's very very complex table, not like the NHS or nice guy, very complex table. Then you, you correlate the finding in HPV testing and the finding in cytology and have a risk in number. Uh, and then if you have a risk about uh, of CIN3 positive, immediate above four percent, you go for the upper, the upper scheme. And if you have lower than that, you go for the lower scheme. Okay. And the upper scheme, if, if the risk is 60 to 100 percent, you're gonna treat. If it's uh, below that, 
you, you either treat or go for colposcopy if the risk is below 24%, I mean the risk of CIN, CIN positive 3, you can go for colposcopy, okay? For the lower risk population, you can go return in one year or return in three years or return in five years according to the risk. Okay. The table for the risk is very complex, so I didn't copy. It's very complex. Yes, I, I just want for everyone interested, he can just uh, uh, upload the application of the ASCP, the American Society for Colposcopy. You can just through the App Store or through the Google uh, Store, you can put a a ASCP, ASCP, American Society of Colposcopy. You download the application. And then I think it is uh, paid, but it's one time, one time per, year, per life, not per year. It's one time payment that is not a, a very large payment. Mm -hmm. And then you can find all the algorithms. You can just put the data uh, of the finding of your patient and go through the algorithms and find what to do next, either colposcopy, biopsy, colonization, blah, blah, blah. So I'd recommend everyone to do this uh, ASCP application. ASCP, yes. The blue one, American Society of Colposcopy. colposcopy. Um ASCC, for cervical yeah. okay. Um, for a colposcopy, which you will have a day tomorrow for that. But we have we have two main uh, staining methods. One one is the common one, which we do with like finger or five five percent acetic acid, uh, and then leave for one two minutes, and then detect acetoid lesion as in the upper uh, picture. The other one is using a local solution. And the, here you are detecting the, the area which is not stained, not the area which is stained. So you can see the yellowish, again, it's the brownish. The yellowish area is the abnormal uh, area that, that you need to take a biopsy from. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, the, the WHO recommendation, and this, this may be the last slide in this scenario, the WHO recommendation for patients who are uh, positive in screening. So you, you have criteria, five criteria. If you fulfill these five criteria, so the, the patient is candidate for uh, ablation, local ablative therapy, either cryoablation or uh, thermal ablation. You should have a squamular uh, columnar junction fully visible, type 1 transitional zoom, lesions occupying less than 75%, and lesions are not extending into the endocervix, and no suspicion of invasion or, or, or glandular disease. If you fulfill these five criteria, so they recommend that you go first for ablative procedures rather than going for excisional surgery. Okay. If you didn't fulfill this or fail treatment with cryotherapy, uh, you can go for excisional surgery. Okay. Uh, and the, the other the other cancer, this is this is the mainly screenable cancer in the in the in the gynecology, the, the cervical cancer, and the breast if you consider that gynecology. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the other cancers is the ovarian and the uterine cancer. Um, you can see there is, there is no recommendation for screening for ovarian cancer for patient with low risk or average population. Uh, but for patient with, with high risk, you can use uh, transvaginal ultrasound and TA25. Uh, uh, high risk population are those who are PSA mutant or have a history of breast, colorectal or uterine cancer and Lynch syndrome. Uh, otherwise, there is there is no recommendation for germ cell or stromal tumors. For uterine cancer uh, screening, um, again, the, the tools are pelvic examination, transvaginal ultrasound, and vitreal biopsy, hysteroscopy, and DNC. And you can see that they are all diagnostic rather than preventable tests. So you are not detecting patient except if they already have had problem. Uh, and because already 85% of endometrial cancer at time of diagnosis have very good survival and are at low stage. So there is there is no high value from screening in this scenario. If you fulfill that, you are not fulfilling the criteria of WHO. There is no serious disease and you're not detecting in an early stage. Not save lives. Yeah. You're not save lives. So uh, take home message, um, a screening is aimed at preventing cancer or detecting it in early stage. Uh, perfect screening should be reliable, highly sensitive and if possible, highly specific. Okay, not harmful. You are detecting a serious disease, and treatment for this disease will alter outcomes, which is not the case in uterine cancer. Uh, of the gynecologic malignancy, uh, only cervical cancer has a valid uh, test for normal population, which is in all in all guidance is either HPV testing, co-testing, or pap smear. But we will use the by tests. Okay, it's okay for limited resources. Uh, HPV vaccinated women, there is there is no evidence that they, they, they alter the screening way, but there is there is not enough studies for that. 
so they still follow the normal screening. Uh, the age have been changed by the American Cancer Society from 21 to 25. And this is the same age in the NHS screen, 25 to 65 years old. Subtotal hysterectomized patients still follow the same guidance. Only the total hysterectomized with no pre-cervical lesion can, can opt out of the screening problem. Okay. Thank you. So with lecture, you, you know where, where this photo from? Where's the photo from? لا لا ده حديث الازهر انت عم سجل سجل حديث الازهر حديث الازهر ازهر بارك اوكي ده حديث الازهر في مصر اه وراها حته اسمها الضرب الاحمر سو ثانك يو ثانك يو دكتور اسلام وي ار سوري فور ذا فويس كونكشنز بيكوز وي ار ترانسميتنج فروم نيو هول توداي سو وي ار جوينج تو سولف ذا فويس كونكشن از وي ديد توداي ثانك يو ياسر فور بينج وذ اس توداي ريبريزنتنج يور كوليجز By the way, if you are near to Mansoura, just come come here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We are having a scientific day and a workshop uh, about uh, cases of colposcopy with Dr. Mohammed Al Azab. He is coming to Mansoura, and uh, this is Hadith Al Azhar in Turkey. Yes, this is Hadith Al Azhar. You are right. Uh, and if you have any question for Dr. Islam, we are ready to receive it. Hadando as well. So again, this was just introduction for screening, why we do screening for cervical cancer, why we don't do screening for ovarian cancer or HCC, for example, or something like this. We would like to remind every one of you that we have now the presidential initiative running in all the Egyptian governments for the screening of four uh, cancers, colorectal cancer, uh, uh, prostate cancer, lung cancer, and cervical cancer. Beside, of course, uh, yes. the breast that has been working for two or three years. Dr. Khaled Gabala is coordinating the cervical cancer screening in uh, in Oncology Center, Mansour University, and he is coordinating tomorrow the colposcopy workshop for our residents and fellows to know how to do colposcopy and how to interpret the results. Uh, next next week, we are going to start the cervical cancer module. I'm going to speak about HIV vaccination, which is the primary prevention, as we we understand now, and then going to the secondary prevention after that with Dr. Ashraf Al Mahdi Larini uh, about colposcopy two weeks after, and then going through the cervical cancer uh, module for two or three months. Uh, That's the answer again today. Islam answered why we don't do screening for, when some people ask us why you do screening for cervical cancer, it is not an Egyptian problem. That's due to the WHO policy that cervical cancer is to eradicate, to be eradicated worldwide by 2030. And so we can still have cases of advanced cervical cancer in Egypt in a world that is eradicating cervical cancer. So we are doing it. Yes, it is not very common. It is not one of the commonest cancers in Egypt, but it's a worldwide policy that we should follow, just not to be uh, not following the world. Thank you, Nirmin, for coming after finishing. <laughs> <laughs> and see you next week. And sorry for the voice uh, problems at the start. We know the problem now, and it has been solved. And thank you. Voice issues. I